Now that we've tackled aldol reactions in basic anesthetic conditions, we've seen when it's appropriate for a condensation to occur in base environment with heat and always in acidic. We've seen how to do a Michael addition and how to identify, oh, okay, we're going to do a 1,4 addition because we have a soft nucleophile and all the relationships that come with those reactions. Now as for our final reaction, this is the last thing we're going to do with alpha carbon chemistry and it's called the Robinson annulation. Here's the best part. You know mechanistically the components that make up a Robinson annulation. Here's kind of like the verbal formula we're going to use. You need an enone plus a 1,3 dicarbonyl. That's not always the case, but we're going to start out with that and I'll explain why later. And then you get your Robinson product. So here's kind of like the reaction that I'm going to show you the mechanism of. And at least for pit kids, I don't know if you need to know this mechanism. I did not need to show it. I think it helps mechanistically, or knowing the mechanism I think helps you complete the product or use it in a synthesis. So I think knowing the mechanism is kind of important. Okay, so here's our enone, right? One, two, three, four, conjugated system, the alkene and the ketone. Here's our one, three dicarbonyl, right? One, two, three, two carbonyls. And if you throw in some LDA to help make an enolate, and you have it follow up with a step of hydroxide in an aqueous environment, water, and heat, you will form this aldol, or sorry, this Robinson product. Okay, I mentioned that it's first a Michael addition followed by an aldol condensation, and you'll see this during the mechanism. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is we need to do a Michael addition, but we need to form our enolate first, right? And that's why I'm going to grab this piece right here. So, if you can help see this, we kind of have a few alpha carbons to pick from when we're using LDA. I'm just going to throw a little pair on there. However, can you see that this carbon kind of doubles up as a double alpha carbon, right? He's an alpha carbon to this carbonyl, and he's an alpha carbon to that carbonyl. So there's double the resonance. He's easily going to be the alpha carbon that will be deprotonated, okay? So, if I'm just going to throw my H up here, I'll grab him, swing these electrons down, I'm just going to make my enolate going up. So here's the enolate we are working with. I just wanted to show you that, okay? So, I'm actually going to erase this because I'm probably going to need all of this space, so sorry about that, but I just want to show you why we're going to choose to make our enolate with that carbon, okay? So, here's my enone, here is now the enolate we both agreed on, you and me. You guys absolutely have a say here on Geochem. Okay, so we need to do a Michael addition, right? So remember, we're going to attack with this dotted alpha carbon, and we're going to attack this asterisk carbon in the enone, the, the carbon that is given the number four in that system, right? So if I'm going to draw the mechanism, Let's swing these electrons down and reform our carbonyl. These electrons in the double bond are coming from the alpha carbon, right? They attack the asterisk carbon. These electrons will swing down there to avoid breaking the octet rule. And then we will finally end this electron flow by kicking electrons up on this carbonyl oxygen. So a lot just happened. So let's redraw what we can redraw. So let's redraw the 1,3 dicarbonyl. So you can see that I did not Touch this carbonyl. Whoops, that was kind of messy. Make that a little bit better. Okay. I reformed this carbonyl. And on my dot alpha carbon, I'm now bonded to the asterisk carbon. So let me draw that. So he's attached to one, two, three carbons, right? Well, he's one of one, two, three, four. He's a chain of four. One, two, three, four. And remember, we now have a double bond here, and we have an O minus right there, okay? That's kind of the result of the electron flow. So we did our Michael addition. Let's clean this carbon or this oxygen up, and let's reform a carbonyl. So let's just find some water, have this swing down, reform our carbonyl, and I'm going to have this. Remember, this is the alpha carbon we're working with. He's grabbing this H. We'll do this, and kind of the result of this electron flow is this. Whoops. 
Sorry about that. Let me draw this. I just want to make sure this is nice and neat for you guys because with a lot of things going on, the groups get big. I want to make sure everything is completely clear as to what is going on. Okay. Right. So this, we have our 1,3 dicarbonyl that we have recovered and haven't changed. We have 1, 2, 3, 4 carbons coming off. 1, 2, 3, 4. And we reformed our carbonyl. Okay. That's the Michael addition aspect of a Robinson annulation. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do an aldol reaction. And we're actually going to make an enolate out of this carbonyl right here. Now the question is, which one are we going to form? And here's the answer. We don't really get to choose. Here's what's going to happen. We can either make our enolate this way, in which case, right, we're actually going to attack. It doesn't matter which carbonyl, but we're going to attack one of these two. So if we are going to attack from this carbonyl, right, we have the choice of making a, because we're going to attack him or him, it's going to, let's attack him. It would be a one, two, three, four membered ring. Not great, because we know there's a lot of ring strain associated with that. Or, if we choose to make this enolate, we'd be making a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 membered ring. Much better. So, you always, so you see how we kind of had the enolate going this way? You always flip the enolate and have it go the other way. So, let's have some more LDA come in. We'll make an enolate, right? Deprotonate the alpha carbon by grabbing that alpha proton. Electrons swing there. Swing electrons up on the carbonyl oxygen. So I'm going to move all the way over here. So remember, we didn't touch anything on the ring to the right that we started out with. Now I'm going to draw this right here. I have an O minus, and the double bond is going this way. And remember, I said we're forming a six membered ring. Because what we're going to do is we're going to attack with this alpha carbon, we're going to attack this carbonyl carbon right there. Because that forms us a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 membered ring. So you see it didn't matter if I went from 5 to 6 here or 5 to 6 there. That's what I was trying to say earlier. Okay, so let's make the arrow, let's draw the arrows to make this happen. Remember, electrons swing down, reform the carbonyl. Take these electrons that are actually coming from the alpha carbon, attack the carbonyl carbon, and swing these per, uh, electrons up to the carbonyl oxygen. Okay, and actually the word annulation means to form a ring, and that's exactly what we just did, right? So let's draw what we haven't changed. We didn't change this carbonyl, carbonyl right here. So you can see now we've made a, uh, a two six-membered ring system, right? Okay, so on carbon six right here, I now have an O minus. On carbon one, nothing. Carbon two right here, we have the double bond formed that makes us a carbonyl right there, and nothing on the rest of the position. So here's kind of the net flow of that electron flow. Okay, so we know that, oh, just to pause real quick, you know we did a Michael addition because we have one, two, three, four, five carbons between the uh, carbonyls we have. And we just did an aldol reaction because he's going to pick up a proton from water, right? And what that does right here is gives us the relationship you would expect from uh, an aldol reaction in basic conditions, right? Because since we attacked with our enolate here, and we attack the carbonyl right there, if you count one, two, three, there's our one, three hydroxy carbonyl, right? So everything's checking out relationship-wise. But you can see, <clears throat> we actually don't have that OH in the product. Well, as you can remember from an aldol reaction in basic conditions with heat added, like we have here, we're gonna drive this OH off, actually. So, let's just, let's do just that. Right, our alpha carbon has an extra car a hydrogen, an extra alpha proton to spare. So we'll just use some OH minus. The heat helps overcome the unfavorableness of him as a leaving group. So we'll swing these electrons down right here, and OH leaves in this condensation reaction, right? So two cyclohexane rings, and then I'll fill in the groups we kind of have going on. Okay. Didn't touch this carbonyl here. 
didn't touch that carbonyl up top. So you can see all we need now is to make a double bond right there. And now you can kind of, let's actually go through the mechanism again and piece together everything we just did. Okay, so starting out, we established we would make our enolate here because this alpha carbon is kind of like serving as a double alpha carbon, right? Here's the enolate we expected to make. We said the first step of a Robinson annulation was a Michael addition. So we attacked with our soft nucleophile. We attacked this carbon in the fourth position with our enolate from the alpha carbon in the enolate. We bounced the electrons as needed, and then we cleaned up our carbonyl. And if you can see, I'm ignoring this, you can see the 1,5 dicarbonyl evidence of a Michael addition right off the bat. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We did a Michael addition. But remember, to then follow up with the aldol condensation in basic environment that we were going to do, we needed to kind of flip our enolate to form a six-membered ring. So that's what we did down here, right? And you can see that this enolate is going to attack that partially positive carbonyl carbon, and we formed a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6-membered ring. Then we protonated that O- minus to having our 1, 2, 3 hydroxycarbonyl, but we're adding in heat. So we don't stop at the 1, 3 hydroxycarbonyl. We take off another alpha proton to then set up an enone forming by driving off OH minus, thank, thankfully to that heat. And you can see that we have, right, we have, oh, let me number it. One, two, three, four. There's our enone. And let's use brown to really make the difference noticeable. I can count one, two, three, four, five for the one five dicarbonyl, or I can go one, two, three, four, five. So you guys know how to do a Robinson annulation. You know the different pieces. It's really this step I feel like that trips people up is that once you reform your carbonyl, you have to form an enolate to then make a six membered ring. Okay. This is the mechanism. I think you guys should really practice this with all the different complete the reaction problems I have. To keep the video separate, here's the mechanism video. I then want to show you guys how you can effectively either complete the reaction if you're given the enone and the dicarbonyl, or how to effectively kind of complete the reaction if you're given the Robinson product and you need to provide both pieces. Okay, so tune into the next video for that.